Greetings! I am Herbert Erpadurp, and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this 15mm scale Flames of War Yonkers JU87G, better known as a Stuka, which in my opinion is one of the coolest looking and most iconic planes of World War II. So I did start this video quite a while ago and lost the footage of actually assembling the model and the first couple of steps of painting. I don't really want to buy another one of these models to redo the assembly video, but I will give a few quick thoughts on the model itself at the end of the video. Fortunately, the first painting steps are not complicated at all, so you're not missing much by not seeing me prime the model with Vallejo Acrylic Polyurethane Black Surface Primer and then airbrushing the underside with Vallejo Model Color Sky Grey, which is how you see it here. To protect the sky grey on the underside of the plane while we paint the green colours on the upper areas, I applied a liquid mask. It is a bit bright so you can't really see much of what I am doing, though it is fairly simple. I just cover the entire underside of the plane, except for the landing struts. I did mask the bottom of the gun pod things, but I probably should have masked the entire things. Humbrol Maskol is what I used for this, though I'm sure any other liquid mask would work, or if you prefer, masking tape. Maskol will definitely stick to your brush and pretty much ruin it, so obviously only use junk brushes. The bottle says it can be cleaned off with cellulose thinner, but I don't have any. Fortunately, I do have plenty of cheap brushes that can just be thrown away. I find it hard to get really nice straight lines with mask oil, so despite being as careful as I could, some correction will be needed later. Now to give the plane some green. I airbrushed on a coat of model colour olive grey. I went with this colour first because it looked like the camo pattern I was going to emulate would be easier to mask with this colour down first. Though you could do it in any order you like really. This is just plain olive grey thinned down appropriately for spraying through the airbrush. You may notice that while I'm airbrushing the plane is attached to a wooden holder. This is just a long thin dowel with a magnet glued to the top so I don't paint the clear flight stand that comes with the kit. Now to begin masking for the splinter camo pattern. To get nice straight edges we are going to use this, Tamiya Masking Tape. This is the 6mm width, though it does come in other sizes, all in these handy dispensers. The dispenser has a cutting thing like regular sticky tape dispensers, though it does leave the end all jagged like so, which isn't always ideal, so I'll be removing it from the roll with scissors. The masking isn't hard to do, but it was a little bit time consuming, more so than simply spraying on a soft edge camo pattern anyway. Obviously all it really involves is placing the masking tape in areas you want to remain olive grey. Position the tape just where you want it and press down good and proper so the paint won't bleed under it. You may find a toothpick useful for pressing the tape down into the corners and gaps. For the camo pattern I decided I would use an image as a reference, this one. I know it isn't the version with the cannons and I'm sure not all planes were painted exactly this way, but I figured using a reference image would be a good way to get convincingly realistic camo, at least better than just winging it. <laughs> get it? Winging it? Cause it's a plane? Haha, <laughs> I know, comedy gold. The masking doesn't have to be absolutely exactly the same as the pattern in the reference image, at least I don't feel like it has to be. You can make yours as identical or not as you like. You do want nice straight lines though. I did my best with any cuts I made to keep them as straight as possible. This is what my masking job ended up looking like. It took me about 20 minutes, so it was kind of time consuming, but not horribly so and definitely quicker and easier than trying to paint the straight camo edges by hand. I didn't bother trying to add any camo patterns to the undercarriage, but I did manage to break the landing struts off. Now the plane is ready for the next colour, which is Vallejo model colour German Camouflage Dark Green. This is yet another simple quick airbrushing job, not terribly exciting to watch. I left the paint to dry properly for a while and then it was time to remove all the masking. It is kind of fun to remove mask all. I was pretty happy with how the camo turned out on the upper surfaces. It's close enough to my reference picture for my liking and the lines are nice and straight. There was barely any bleed through, though you can see on the left wing a little bit of paint was either lifted up by the tape or rubbed off at some point. I'm not quite so satisfied with the masking on the underside of the plane. I do find it pretty hard to get nice straight masking edges with mask oil, and I probably should really have used the masking tape for the edges at least. It just slipped my mind. Not really a huge deal though, it just means we need to do a little bit of cleanup up, which we probably would have had to do with the masking tape anyway. I began making corrections with the model colour sky grey. I use a fine brush and very carefully paint as straight a line as I can over the jagged chunks of green that have found their way into the area that should be grey. Not a lot of the grey should be visible from the side of the plane. Just go slowly and carefully, there's no need to rush. 
I find it very hard to paint straight lines freehand, but I think I've done an alright job here and if I can do it, anyone can. Looking at some examples of Stukas, I noticed that the pod things for the cannons were mostly grey, so I take a larger brush and make it so. I really should have masked the entire gun pods with the rest of the underside. It would have made things slightly easier. Oh well, not really a big deal. I also noticed that I forgot to mask off the bottom of the nose, so I carefully apply the grey here too. I think I did pretty well there for freehand. Also, when looking at my reference picture, I noticed that the propeller hub nose cone thing was painted red with a white or grey stripe. I figured painting it grey now would provide a nice base for the red later, so I painted the entire nose grey. I then realised that the actual propeller part in my example is dark green and the white stripe is in front of that, then the red. I didn't bother to fix it though because I didn't care that much. Then I decided to do something about the canopy glass before I begin correcting the green edges. I figure that will save some time. I wasn't entirely sure this would work, but hey, experimenting is fun. I take some Vallejo Model Air gun metal and apply it to all the glass surfaces in the canopy. I do try to avoid getting it on the frame, but that was next to impossible to do perfectly. Thus doing it before the clean up with the greens means I will only have to repaint the frames once. You can see here the result I got was pretty messy and definitely way too shiny as it is. That will be taken care of. I could have simply painted the glass black or maybe a very dark blue with some light blue stripes to represent the shine of glass, but I wanted to try this idea. To try and get those little highlight lines of glass shine, I added some small patches of Model Air steel. I then apply Army Painter Blue Tone straight from the bottle with no thinning. I did also consider using Secret Weapon Blue Black Wash for this, but the Blue Tone seemed like it would look nicer in this case. This step was obviously a little bit more messy than the previous one. Be careful not to get the Blue Tone onto the green anywhere but the canopy frame. I did three layers of this, though I was tempted to do one more to get it a little bit darker, but I think even with three it has turned out pretty good. Of course I haven't cleaned it up yet, so it does still look quite messy. It does look quite bright under my lights, but even when it's a bit darker it still shines a little and reflects some light. I think it's a pretty cool effect, though it will be diminished a little bit by matte varnish and such. Next I break out the model colour olive grey again and make corrections to any areas of that colour that need it. I carefully try to get the line where the grey and green meet as straight as possible. I'm never going to be able to hand paint a perfect straight line, but it should look fine from a distance and from above as you would view it on the gaming table, you will probably never see it. Of course, don't forget to paint the edges of the wings. These aren't properly cast on my model so they're a little bit ragged looking and having the darker colour go all the way to the bottom of the wing kind of hides that a little bit. There was also this area of paint on the wing that had peeled up a bit so I touched that up while I had the appropriate colour out. I also use this colour to paint in around the very tops of the landing struts. My paint reference does suggest that there should be a straight band of olive grey around the top of the leg bits. No way was I even going to try masking that off. Nobody will ever see it and nobody will know, except you. Because I told you, I guess. Shh. The next step is obviously to do the same thing with the darker green, model colour German camo dark green. This is pretty much exactly the same, except this time we also add a little extra dark green to the upper front part of the gun pods where they join the wing. Also, we need to fix the canopy frame. There was almost no olive grey on the canopy. The canopy frame was quite tricky to paint. I went very slowly and carefully. I didn't want to have to try and fix the metallic and blue layer. The raised surface of the frame did help a fair bit, but it was still tricky and I still messed up in a couple of places, particularly at the top of the canopy. Nothing too serious though. Here is what I ended up with. Definitely not 100% perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it does the job well enough and it looks just fine from a distance, which is really what counts for a tabletop gaming model I guess. I am pretty happy with how the windows look. Next I carefully applied Vallejo Model Air Scarlet to the propeller hub cone thingy. The image on the box art for this kit shows a plane with a black and white spiral painted on this part, but I didn't really feel up to painting that. I would want it to be perfect, and I would likely drive myself insane trying to get it right. I would probably still be repeatedly trying to correct it even now. The spiral is pretty cool, but I also quite liked the red with white stripe version that my reference image has. I am pretty happy with how the red has turned out. The sky grey underneath has definitely helped quite a lot. Next I apply Vallejo Model Colour Chocolate to the exhausts. I figure this would be a good base for a kind of rusty and sooty weathered part. Pretty easy, just apply it carefully to the exhaust parts without getting it on the green parts and it's done. Then I paint the wheels with Vallejo Model Air German Grey. Not much to this at all really. Again, put the grey where you need it and don't get it on the green. Also don't forget the little tail wheel or your Stuka will look quite foolish. 
I then painted the cannons black. I'm not sure if they are meant to be black, but I thought it would look cool. I used black primer for this because I feel it gives a nicer result than the Model Air black that I have, and it has much better coverage. As you can see, the plane is now quite shiny. This is because I applied a coat of gloss varnish and let it set overnight in preparation for applying the decals. This is the decal set that came with this plane. It looks like whoever designed the label for these got the upper and under wing marking mixed up, and I hadn't noticed before applying them, but the black is definitely printed a little bit off center with these decals. I chose the decals I wanted to use, and then I let them soak in Humbrol decal fix for a while. Figuring I would apply the squadron markings to the side of the plane first, I brush on a little bit of the Humbrol decal fix, and then slide the decal off its paper and onto the model. The decal is a bit far forward and at an odd angle, but that's that would normally not be an issue. I add some more decal fix, and the decal doesn't move when I try to use my brush to move it. So I figure, well, I'll gently drag it along with the tip of my knife. Nope, it almost immediately tore the decal. After some more frustrating and ultimately destructive attempts to get the decal to move, I said fuck it, and removed it. Looks like I'll be using the more boring squadron markings that I didn't really want to use though it is fortunate that they were there. In the meantime, I figured why not try apply one of the tail markings. Somehow it managed to fold over on itself. I did manage to get it off the model and fix it in the decal fix, but I never managed to get it into place. I gave up on it. Not that sad about having one less swast sticker on my plane, really. After what felt like 500 hours, I did manage to get the rest of the decals into place with a minimum of hassle and frustration, though the whole time I was expecting them to either break or fold up, so I was extra careful with them. I'm pretty disappointed that I had to use this squadron marking, but I guess it could be worse. These decals were garbage toilets. I think this has been the most rage-inducing attempt at using decals that I can remember. I almost never have such trouble with them. If they were a person, I would have punched them in the face. I didn't want to even try to apply the tank kill markings. I'd had enough. I threw them out. Normally I would keep leftover decals, but not these. This is the closest I've ever come to smashing a model out of frustration. Anyway. Of course, the decals are way too bright and white, so I quickly take care of that, despite being scared to so much as think about touching them lest they break apart. I do this by applying a very thin mix of Army Painter Strong Tone to them in order to give them a less bright, more dirty and worn appearance. The mixture is one quarter Strong Tone to three quarters water. You can see what a huge difference this makes to the decals. I don't only apply this to the decals, but randomly over the rest of the plane too, just to add a little bit of dirt here and there. Especially on the propeller hub, exhausts, wheels, and the angled supports for the tail bit. The rest of the weathering and dirt will be applied with enamels, but before I can do that I give the entire model a coating of satin varnish with the intent of protecting the paint. Next I applied some AK Interactive Panel Liner. This is the first time I've actually used this product for its intended purpose, that being the darkening of lines between panels on an aircraft. Though they probably more intended it for larger scales, it works just fine here too. Apply it along all the panel lines on the plane using capillary action where possible to draw it into the gaps, otherwise just painting it onto the line lines works well too. After leaving the panel liner to sit for a bit, I then take a clean brush with thinner on it and remove the panel liner from the surface areas of the plane where I don't want it. You need to frequently clean the brush for this or you just end up pushing the panel liner around, which isn't always bad, though the goal is to remove some of it at least. You can always apply, remove and reapply this as much as you like until you're satisfied with the results. It can be a little bit time consuming, but it could also be much worse. Here you can see what a big difference this makes. It is obviously still still wet, but there's a lot more depth there now. Make sure you remember to apply this to the bottom of the Stuka as well. It just won't do to have a shiny clean underside when the rest of the plane is so dirty. When I was applying this to the undercarriage of the plane, I thinned the panel liner as I was applying it by applying some panel liner, then moving it around the lines and gaps with a brush that had been dipped in thinner. When removing the panel liner, try to brush from the front of the plane towards the rear. That way any streaks you leave should look more realistic. I then applied more satin varnish and very roughly masked off the canopy. I'm going to apply dust effects and I don't really want to destroy the window effect with dust. It's okay if a little bit gets through the mask, but for the most part I want the canopy clean. We can just assume it gets cleaned more regularly than the rest of the plane. First I sprayed some AK Interactive Summer Cursed Earth that have been diluted roughly one part Cursed Earth to something like six parts White Spirit Thinner. I spray this mostly at the front of the plane to simulate its forward motion through the dust, and I focused fairly heavily on the undercarriage, though the entire plane does at least get a little bit. To add a little variety to the dust colour and lighten it up a little bit, I then sprayed AK Interactive Africa Dust Effect 
effects in much the same way. Same heavy dilution and all. I spray more of this on the upper portion of the plane, though the bottom gets a fair bit too. I know this plane would probably not be used in Africa in this colour scheme, but I don't care. There is now Africa dust on it, and I think it helps. Just to add a little more streaking to the underside of the plane, I again used a clean brush with only thinner to remove some of the dust effects. Not too much though. I then applied AK Interactive Light Rust Wash for green vehicles to the exhausts. It did make them look a little bit too bright and excessively rusty, but that's okay. The soot will soon take care of that. This is not quite the right application for this, but I'm too rebellious to care. I applied AK Interactive Dark Streaking Grime to the wheels, just to darken them a little bit. I think it worked well enough. Then I take my airbrush and very, very carefully, with the trigger restricting thing almost all the way forwards to remove the risk of spraying out tons of colour at once, apply some model air black around the exhausts, and to the side of the plane behind the exhausts. I think I was a little bit heavy handed with this, but it looks okay, especially on the plane's right. And that's all I'm going to be doing with this model. I apply a coat of AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish to seal it all in and give it a nice dull look. We don't want it to be too shiny or the Soviets might spot it and do mean things to it. Overall, I'm fairly happy with the painting on this model, not so much the model itself. To begin with, it isn't cast very well. The wings are obviously where the two halves of the mould must join and they're pretty crappy. A little jagged in some places and it looks like the resin didn't quite fill the mould properly. It isn't really that bad. It wasn't bad enough for me to do anything besides a little bit of filing. From a distance it looks fine. What I was more annoyed about was the landing gear, or landing struts or whatever you want to call them. I had the worst time with the landing struts on this model. It seems like they're designed to just come unbonded repeatedly. I didn't have this trouble with the guns. The wheels came off so many times that I lost count. Over 10 and not due to rough handling at all. The final time was just before applying the matte varnish. I almost had a meltdown because of it. They had only just fallen off after I had completed the exhaust soot. They've been reattached so many times, the point at which they attach to the plane looks like complete garbage. If I hadn't already pretty much finished the model, it never would have been completed. If, well, when is probably the more appropriate word, when they fall off again, I'm not only going to throw this model in the goddamn bin, but I will first run over it in my car and then set it on fire. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with it, though I went a little bit heavier on the dust than I intended to. That's okay though, I like it. One day I'm going to get my hands on the plastic stukas made by Victrix, though I do believe they're actually 100th scale and these planes are 144th scale, so I'm not sure it would be entirely fair to compare them. I'm sure their wheels won't fall off at least. I have previously painted Flames of War aircraft, well, one, the Sturmovik. If you want to watch that video, there will be a link in the description and in the end card of this video. I do also plan to build the Flames of War British Typhoon sometime soon too. Overall, this paint job didn't take me all that long. I forgot to keep track of time, but it was probably something like 6 or 7 hours, maybe a little bit more. There wasn't really anything complicated to it. The main colours were airbrushed on, which is nice and quick. About the most tricky thing was painting the canopy and painting straight lines where they were needed. I don't believe I did anything too advanced with this model, but if there's anything you would like me to go into more depth and elaborate on, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. For anyone interested, a list of the paints I used in this project will be in the video video description. My colour choices, of course, aren't the final authority at all. In fact, there is likely to be plenty of discussion to be found online about accurate colours for German warplanes, or anything really for that matter. What do you think? I would love to see any comments, questions or suggestions you might have in the comments section below. If you like the videos I make, be sure to do things like clicking like, sharing with anyone who might find them interesting or helpful, and of course subscribing. If you really like what I do, please consider supporting me via Patreon at patreon.com slash it would be greatly appreciated. I am planning to add new rewards and goals there and any suggestions for those you might have would also be appreciated. As always, I hope this has been helpful or interesting. Thanks for watching. Farewell.